come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday on every single podcast repository oh, on the internet. Every single one. <laughs> you can find us. If we're not on your favorite place to find podcasts, let us know and we'll try and do something about it. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, but who we are, we are the internet <laughs> radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. <laughs> Thank God. And tonight, uh, oh, well, so, I mean, the way we work this is we. Uh, you are all out of oh, You're right. all over the place. Well, well, all we over the place. The room Take a deep and breath. We kind of uh, bring movies. Nobody knows what we're going to watch next week. Mm. Like, I mean, this That's is an honest true. statement. Right now, we have no idea yeah. what we're watching next week. No idea. Some of us. Some don't of us even don't know, know what we're watching, what we're picking next week. That's right. Yeah. And some of us don't even know who's picking next week. I just week. had a mini it's panic true. thinking about who's picked next week and we're going to be a pick. <laughs> oh, I got this one down. This one I'm guaranteed to get. Okay. Uh, Although, so, um, and we want to also mm-hmm. ask you to do us one great big favor. Go uh, to wherever you did find us and give us a star rating, a like, sub- hit the subscribe button. Oh, give us do. a review if you can, because all of that stuff. Helps us achieve our goal. Yeah, mm-hmm. go to YouTube and subscribe. Domination. Yeah. We would like you to subscribe on YouTube. We need 50 Sean of remembers you. now that we're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the first time, I'm just like, Colin informed me today that we have a, a number of subscribers on YouTube. I'm like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is news to all like, of us. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, take, <laughs> not bad take for an over. audio-centric uh, thing that we do here. <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. What's, on the video what's the, uh, what, what's the visual on that? Is it just our graphic? Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. I, at one hey. point, I did explore that whole thing where you get the uh, waveform. Sure. sure. But sure. good God, that took like... Uh, yeah. uh, dear listener, dear brailer, dear reader, let us know if you like a visual component to this podcast. I mean, we're always... Some of us are against it. I mean, but, but let us know what you if want. you really want we're it... willing to hear you out. If you what really you want it, in? yeah. I mean, Would we want to give you... We want to give you what you want. Yeah. Give the people what they want. <laughs> right, we're here for it. It's not the let them eat cake situation. It's like, no, no, no. We'll no, actually yeah. Uh, yeah, give the people. The, yeah. We can do it. Give the people what they Let want. Let us know. Yeah. yeah. Please. We want to make you happy. Yeah. That's why we're here. Right? <laughs> Being happy makes us happy. <laughs> and the world goes round and round. There you go. Uh, tonight, we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what we watch tonight? Tonight, we watched a movie called Waxwork. From what year? You. Oh, 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 oh. Answer both at the same, same time. time. Double. Uh, 1998, Anthony Hickox. 1988, Anthony Hickox. Okay. Yeah. Who we know right. from. Sounds like a fake name. Uh, Anthony Hickox. He sounds I very big. Like Anthony Hickox. <laughs> we have watched one of his movies on this, the Freak Show before. <gasps> so he's I two thirds was, of the way to the wall is what you're saying? Well, I thought it was familiar. Who, according what? to MF Mad, he is on the wall of what? fame. But <gasps> once as what? an actor. Okay. Apparently he was can't, in, also, he can't be the same thing. He can't be an actor in the movie and a director of a movie and be considered two. But what, what if I mean? he starred, What if he was an actor in one movie that he didn't direct? That's fine. Like, okay, as long as yeah. there's separate incidents okay. of him yeah. appearing on the show. So, well, MF Mad, who is the keeper of the, the keeper wall, of the wall. The keeper of the wall, yeah. Because we wall. have here the on, on the this wall, wall yeah. every single, if we have covered a person in a, who is in a movie three times, despite the puts, quality yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> of their appearances, as long as you're in a movie that we've done three times, we have I'm almost amassed. on the wall. That's how <laughs> that's right. I mean, this is. Uh, but apparently Anthony Hickox was in, in some capacity, the return of the living dead part three. Oh, okay. Uh, he directed, yes. uh, Wait, Hellraiser three. Hell on. There, there it is. There it is. Yeah. But he also directed he did a, a warlock stuff. movie. Didn't he? he directed warlock two. Warlock That's warlock two. Armageddon. Yes. He directed a movie for HBO, which I still have not seen. Starring the great Mario Von Peebles, Van Peebles. It's a werewolf cop movie what? called full eclipse. Not called I'm Wolf Cop. I'm going to put this on my <laughs> list real quick. I know, I know. I, know. Yeah. I want to Mario Van Peebles' werewolf uh, cop movie. Yeah, all right. They're I'm, cops. 
but they're also werewolves. What's it yeah. called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full Eclipse. Full Eclipse. Full Eclipse. It's, I, I, it's somebody, been like I'm a full three months down. since I picked a werewolf movie. Maybe <laughs> right? it's time again. Yeah. For I think it's that's, time. That's worthy of it. Looking I know. Up a trailer I always going, like what? skipped this yeah. movie. It was made for HBO Why? like in the 90s. Oh, the you're, video. oh, you're saying all the right things, Callie. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this sounds like a lost gem right here. Yeah. It could be. I mean, oh, for God. all I know, we got to. Does he keep the Jamaican accent from Jaws the Revenge? Oh, God, yes. I don't think so. I think that's what I want to know. Van Peebles okay. movie with the, the accent. That would have sold me. Um, mm-hmm. He also did a movie called Sundown the Vampire in Retreat. Anybody? That's a nope. long one. Uh, nope. That sounds like a vampire western. It is. No, 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 I, I, no. It's, it's like John Carpenter's vampire. Yeah, a vampire well, the, western. It's got uh, Bruce Campbell and David Carradine. <gasps> Why would we not watch this? What? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anthony Hickox is like uh, okay, I, I like this guy. guy. I like, that saying. sounds amazing. Well, I, I think like he's this still guy. working, but it's like in you know TV shows that I don't mean personally I'd probably never watch. But sure, I mean, yeah. for a brief run there, he had these movies that like I always saw when I went to the video store. Oh sure, mm-hmm. oh yeah, you he's know, a video store guy. Yeah, because mm-hmm. this was the video store era that Waxwork comes out of. I mean, yeah. it was uh, distributed originally by Vestron Pictures. Yes. Right? This is an offshoot of Vestron Video. Some of you may remember, we should start the episode with the Vestron uh, music logo. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, I remember seeing their logo on so many movies, and then I was going back, and I'm like, what the fuck were these movies? That, See, you know, I never remember a Vestron logo. From any movie I watched when I was younger. Oh yeah, never. Oh, so this whole resurgence of yeah, Vestron, this now is all new to me. They're putting out Blu-rays, yes. of all of their stuff, all the yes, Warlock movies and all the Society. Uh, they did Society, I believe. Uh, did they yes. really? That society. movie bothers me. Yeah, Society was a Vestron. It was. I don't know if I can watch that movie again. I have mm-hmm. never seen it, and I I've want never, to. I've never it seen it. It was just done on. Uh, it, well, recently it's come about because uh, Joe Bob Briggs did it on oh, his right. uh, last drive. It's a gross movie. It is a gross movie. Looks like a gross movie. Yep. They also did uh, Billy previous... Warlock from. Uh, sorry. Oh no. From Baywatch. From... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. What did we just see Billy Warlock in? I can't remember. We just watched a movie with had Billy Warlock in it. Did or we? A mention of it. I don't know. We were just talking about Billy Warlock for some reason. That is. Like... Don't Are you know sure why. that was us? Uh-huh. <laughs> just kidding. Maybe me. It was just me. Was I talking about Baywatch recently? I think. I might... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was at work. I was talking about Baywatch. Mm-hmm. Shit. All right. There we go. Well, I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, how much Baywatch comes up. Um, at Sean, I was like, it, I was like a, a Sean's lot, job, actually. probably a lot. Surprised? Yeah, we talk about Baywatch a lot. Baywatch nights, uh huh. Baywatch Hawaii yeah. with Hawaii. Jason Momoa. Yeah, that's oh, right. Jesus. <laughs> we got into Baywatch nights because at a certain point, vampires and spirits and shit came in. What? Like, I what? know. What? <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> Season two, they're like ratings aren't doing so good. We're bringing in vampires. They're like, like off. Go get them. They were like, Buffy's really popular, yes. so let's do that. I'm That's sorry. Amazing. How, did, how did I not know that this happened? I didn't know that was a thing. I, I was actually blindsided as well. Wow. I'm just like, wait, what? Wow. Maybe we all need to do a Baywatch Nights I mean, we can, point. It, it, it only lasted two seasons because even the vampires didn't save it, so yeah. it may be worth a look. Yeah. Wow. This wow. is like, I mean, I, this like, is earth shattering news. Yeah. yeah. Mind as well. Yeah. Wow. Yes. You should see the, op- I'm going to show you guys the opening of season two of Baywatch. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love it. Right. I can't wait to go uh, back and uh, check this out. Hasselhoff walks towards the camera in slow motion for like five minutes. That's the opening of this show. Well, yeah. Well, I creepy shit goes I on yeah. I wouldn't expect anything yeah. less. It's great. But back to Vestron. Uh, yeah, I mean, releasing well, movies on Blu-ray. Well, yeah, but they also uh, like they did some. Uh, I mean, their whole thing, I guess, you know, it's like it's uh, they 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 didn't necessarily make a bunch of movies, but they distributed yes, a bunch of movies. Distribution, yes. So I think like uh, I don't think they did Chud, but they did like Lair of the White Worm. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Slaughter High. I think was one. Slaughter of them, High was one of them. Return of the Living Dead Part Three. Yeah, I mean, they somehow, even though New World Pictures made Warlock, Vestron Pictures put it out on videos, right, yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, and now uh, there's been this, like, Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall, Chopping Mall yeah. was one. But so, some of them, because eventually they got into, like, actually making movies, and mm-hmm. they made, like, fucking Dirty Dancing, I think, is a Vestron picture. Oh, really? Shut yeah. up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bravo. They actually graduated to film production. But I think what happened... Um, and Waxwork might be a victim of this as well, is that I think in the, the heyday of uh, VHS, right? Like right when everybody, mass uh, saturation, 
It didn't matter what the fuck you put out (laughs) on VHS. People Mm -hmm. would rent it because they had the the thing in their house and they wanted to watch movies. We spent a fortune on this VCR. We're going to use it, damn it. So you go to the video store and you bring home a stack of like, I mean, like the video stores that you went to, did they have a maximum limit of I think it was three. Could... I think you I... can only get three. Oh, I think we were at the... three or five. I worked at one. It was seven. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I feel like I remember there was a period of time where like every family in the neighborhood that had a VCR had the same five VHS tapes. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like the, the, them or, yeah, they yeah. own them. Oh, yeah. Like once, oh, yeah, it, yeah, like once they became affordable enough to own, like e. it was like it was ET, yeah. it was Grease, e. with Dirty green, Dancing, green yeah. flip on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. ET, Grease, Dirty Dancing were the ones I remember. Yeah, I had all those. Yeah, and then Terminator Two was one for some reason I that we had. I, I don't know why we had that one, but it, it, it was like it was like the same, you know, like. Same mainstream, like re- readily available movies that like everybody sure. had. Everybody and, had ATM. Like until mm-hmm. it became affordable and then it got more diversified. Yeah. But for a while, it was like you could only get this like small collection of well, super popular. You about the three, Do you know though, why that like, was? Yeah. Get one free. I think it was three. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you why that was. If you guys don't remember this, because when <laughs> movies came out on VHS, right, they cost eighty nine ninety five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were expensive as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there was, I can't remember which what the movie was, but it could have been E.T. That they oh, actually, we talked about this. They at some came point. up with the idea of like, hey, what if we sell this one for like $17? And like mm-hmm. everybody in the world bought the fucking yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. That's why everybody had the same ones. Yeah. Because those were the sell through titles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That they could afford. I was a Betamax household. So Good I was a. Grief. Diff- were you? Well, yes. it is a wow. Wow. My dad still has a functioning wow. Betamax player. No. All my home videos Jesus. are on Betamax. Everything we own. See, is but Betamax. I mean, back back in the day, I mean, most people the VHS tapes that they had were um, the shit they recorded off TV. Yeah. yeah, that was the main collection. Yeah, you had a few things that you bought. Like we had like fucking Mrs. Doubtfire and like the Nutty Professor. But then like three thousand things that we recorded off <laughs> illegal <laughs> HBO. Right? On, uh, yeah. What was the EP? Which so you can get three of them. Uh, yeah. Extended one. play. It was yeah. EP, LP, SP. Yeah, yeah except the back yeah. quality right. though. Well, except yeah, play long play, short play. Or yeah, something like and that. and to this day, if I watch a movie, I instantly want to watch the movie that comes after it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. right. Oh, yeah, that's right. The thing. That's the thing. That's like the I watch thing that sticks like, in your mind. Like if I watch <laughs> yes. if I watch the Little Mermaid, I will want to watch Batman. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> without question. <laughs> Batman was another one of those. Yeah, 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 that was. But he had a copy one, yeah. of Batman. Uh, it's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When that came out. Yeah. Oh God. To the this to days. this day, if I watch The Wizard of Oz at the very end, if it's not Star Wars: A New Hope afterwards, like I lose my mind. <laughs> this is, I lose it. This is me with songs now because I used to watch every infomercial that mm-hmm. was in the world that was like, buy this collection of sixty CDs. Here are all the songs that are on these CDs. So whatever order those songs were on the infomercial, oh, the thirty second clip, whatever. Yeah. When that song is done and I hear it on the radio, I'm like, all right, this song's next. Yes. Yeah. Because. Yes. That's ingrained in you. It's just, it will be it there for the rest of my for life. the rest of my yep. life. Yep. Well, I remember there were a I couple know, other well. uh, labels <laughs> at that time. There was like Media, Home Entertainment, Lightning Video, I think was maybe a subsidiary of Vestron. But all these uh, companies basically eventually folded into, I think like, like I tracked it back. It was like Vestron got sold to Live. Remember Live? Live yeah. got sold to Artisan. Remember Artisan? Yeah, I remember, yeah, Artisan. I remember Artisan. Artisan. Got sold to Lionsgate. There it and is. They're still yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so Lionsgate Damn. is now resurrecting the. So I, actually, right, I think yeah. this uh, special edition is somewhere. Yeah, a Lionsgate. Oh, there uh, it is. Release. They'll have their name on it somewhere. Yeah, it's a good release. You got a well, double feature work, on there. But this is what I'm saying. Like, uh, well, yeah, because we got Waxwork and Waxwork Two in the in the collection. Uh, Waxwork was a theatrical film. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, it was designed for movie theaters. It was Hickox's first movie, but it had, uh, it's got David Warner in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, who's also a freak show of uh, turtles to fame. Wasn't he in, isn't he on the wall? (laughs) He should be. The dude has over 200 IMDb credits. Yeah. It's safe to assume he's on the wall. I tried looking him up on IMDb right before we started recording. It was like, there's too much to scroll through. Yeah. 223 credits. We did like at least scream. Was he scream two? Scream two. Time bandits. Time bandits. Uh, That's one of the, uh, (laughs) I mean, we got him. Yeah. He's definitely on the wall. He's on the wall now. I don't have, but there's, there's more. He's no, he's on the wall. We did well, time he, bandits here, didn't yeah. we? Yes, 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 we did. We did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Unfortunately, and we, we did, did. Term, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Secret we did, of the Use. Maybe yeah. we did the we first did, one. No, we did uh, 
we have this, we have Scream 2. And we did From we, Beyond the Grave. Time, we did something else. Time, time Bandits. Bandits. Time yeah. Bandits, this, and Scream 2. But from, That's all we need. Yeah, okay. So he's, at least, we, he's on the wall. Yeah. And he's we've on done, the wall. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it also has Patrick McNee. Anybody? Anybody? McNee. He was, okay. Yeah. okay. Who's he in the movie? <laughs> he is Sir Wilfred. Uh, uh, Wolfie, Wolfie, uh, yeah, the uh, yeah, he the was uh, John Steed in a show called The Avengers. He was John Steed. He was John Steed opposite Emma Peel, who wow. was Diana Rigg, and everybody now knows yeah. Diana Rigg as, as Olena Tyrell. Yeah, yeah, in the show Game of Thrones. That's, That's right. right. Wow. So before there was a bunch of all right, I forgot that connection. Yep. Yeah, Patrick McNee wow. was John Steed. That's actually why, because the Avengers is such a big British hit, that's why if you watch what we consider the Avengers over there, it's called Avengers Assembled. Well, they did that's a good they idea. also they they did that nineties version, American version of the Avengers yeah. Uma yeah, Thurman yeah, that was Uma really Thurman bad. Was yeah. 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 Where that Sean Connery was trying to control the weather. Yes. Yeah. Eddie Izzard's in that movie as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord. Yeah. There's umbrellas Lord. and shit. Yeah. yeah. That movie. John Reese Davies also makes an appearance in this film. He is from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, right. Fame. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that's how most people would probably know well, him. That's how they know uh, I'm him going now. back to Raiders. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I will go okay. back to Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, well, okay. So the idea, like, uh, you guys had not seen this movie before. No. I mean, like, this is I've one of the. Before. You had twenty years ago. Okay, yeah, because it was. I think it was a touchstone movie from the VHS era. Mm. I think horror fans in the VHS era, everybody saw this fucking movie because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was no, like you said, it's a video store movie. Yeah, yeah, that's how me and my brother saw it. Yeah, yeah, because I I remember seeing this in the video store. I never actually watched it, but I remember seeing that's a good cover. Yeah, yeah. to be like, ooh, no one saw it in the fucking theater. It made like eight hundred thousand. Ah, yeah, but on video, it was explosively popular. Apparently. Enough to justify a sequel. Yeah, when anyway. it's easily accessible, you're just like, that looks fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Give me that. Well, I mm -hmm. think that's what I was going after before. It's like, and Full Moon was also like uh, right, in yeah. this area, in this era. Um, at some point, people would rent anything that was out on VHS, and eventually they became, because of the glut, they became a little more discerning. Mm -hmm. And then all of these studios kind of started folding up or folding in on, you know, being purchased and disappeared. Sure. Yeah. Combine them all and everything. Yep. Indeed. So now you have uh, the asylum. I keep bringing that up, but Don't, like, you have, just stop. Well, who else makes like direct to video uh, stuff? I think plenty of people do. We just don't know their names. And shit. Well, they all seem like they. Because Bruce off Willis has a fucking cottage industry on doing direct to video stuff. Well, I don't know who produces those movies. Because it seems like, like they a lot start of off as like they're going to be theatrical, right? And then they end up getting. Uh, put in uh the you know like film festivals or something right and then they end up on video but right. do they uh, are they i mean netflix is direct to video at this yeah. point that's yeah. that's where we're at uh what is the fucking company that made uh health fest because when i sat there i'm oh. like this movie was supposed to go direct to video wasn't it <laughs> and it had a bunch Probably. of trailers on the front of it i'm like you're never actually gonna see this movie in a theater no um okay so wax work is surprisingly not a movie about a bunch of melting, uh, you know, uh, uh, Madame Tussauds. Yeah. No, that's House figures. of Wax, I think. Yeah, yeah. which is 100% what I expected. No, this, I yeah, was like, Michaela and I more, wax. Yeah. more wax. Michaela, I and I were, Michaela and I were in agreement. This movie was nothing that we thought it was going to be <laughs> yeah. at all. Uh, that could be good or could be bad. Stay tuned to the end of the movie when you find out, we'll or end of it. the show, or we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of this. So this falls into the genre of uh, fantasy horror. Would you yeah. Say? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's uh, so it has uh, Zach Galligan. Is that his name? Yep. Yes. Yep. The star of Gremlins and Gremlins. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to this guy? He's, he TV. sucks. That's what happened. I think he started <laughs> he's, doing TV he's, stuff, he's didn't he? Great. Yeah. I've seen yeah. him in a a couple other things. Nothing that comes he to mind. He does conventions. Does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he does You can eat off of uh, yeah. Gremlins and Gremlins 2 at this point. Yep. Like, that's I all you I think so, need. right? Yeah, yeah, that's all yeah. you need at this point. Yeah. Once yeah. You become... I've seen him at a couple conventions. Yeah, until we all die off, he's got a career. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just going around signing autographs. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. It's a sweet spot to be. Is he a good actor? I don't know. I mean, that was the <laughs> funny thing about uh, hearing Anthony Hickox talk about wax work when he was asked, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, who do you want to cast in this? He's like, I'm a big fan of Gremlins. Can we get that guy? And they called him, 
And his agent was like, yeah. And Hickox was like, this is fucking amazing. The, I got the agent was like, surprised? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> don't, like, sure you can have him. Oh, like, no, what else is he doing? Don't say that, because that's how I would cast a movie. Like, if I were yeah. in a movie, I'd be so like, I love that person in that movie. Get him in my movie. Right. That's how yeah. I Even, cast. like, off of Gremlins, I'd be like, yeah, let's cast this guy. Yeah. Like, because I would cast yeah. him off Gremlins. Yeah, I would, too. Fine. I would, the too. the fact that he said yes to Waxwork means that you got nothing else going on. Right? Yeah. 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 The phone yeah. wasn't ringing all. Uh, yeah, and run with it. But again, yeah. I guess it was going to be a theatrical film, and you got sure. David Warner and Pac- Patrick McNee in it, so yeah, you know, class. David sure. Warner, John Rice Davies, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Rice Davies <laughs> appears for about thirty seconds, but you know, hey, he's yes. still in the credits. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what's this movie about? Set us up. What what's going on here? Wax people. And we just told everybody that yeah. it's not about wax people. Sean, you got to go. Uh, that's very true. Uh, it's <laughs> well, a, it's, it is a teenage like, drama. Yeah. Well, okay. we start it's, out. It is Greece. Yeah. We start it out with a little Greece. Grease. It is Greece with. Uh, it is with lifting the, the framing with rich device. It's interrupted. With rich kids. Rich Greece people. Yeah. Rich Greece people. <laughs> <laughs> rich Greasy people that got Socias. interrupted by David Warner. It's true. It's the Socias. It's the Socias. It is. Socias. That get invited to a waxwork, which is in the middle of a, like a suburb. Which yeah. Nobody else finds this weird. It's like on your street. No, they right. do find it weird, though, because they no, point out they how weird yeah. it is it in the sh- first act. Right. Because yeah. it just shows up in the middle of the street. Yeah. Wasn't there, that wasn't there when yesterday. They're, when they're walking to college. Right. Walking yeah. to college <laughs> like you do. Right. Because if you have a waxwork on one street, it logic says around the corner right. is the college. Yeah. Because right. this is like a college town. And yeah. Just shit Everything's up. just this within a couple mini castles blocks. and all that. Like, you know how it is. Is that a cooter style? I don't know. Tudor, Tudor style yeah. house? Uh, no, Tudor's more, mm-hmm. it feels like not that. Okay. Yeah. More wood and mm-hmm. less brick. Mm-hmm. But the waxwork is in a house, in a yeah. residential yeah. street. It's the weirdest fucking shit. Sure. With house. just a sign. Yeah. It's just like, it's, let's, let's be, it's fucking Beverly Hills. Yeah. Like, it's basically. gotta be. Like, it feels yeah. like it. <laughs> Although we think that possibly there are a couple of, uh, maybe the school and their, uh, an apartment building later might have been used in Fright Night Part 2. Mm-hmm. Feels yeah, like it. It looked like it. Yeah. It's, 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 very, it's all very LA. Yeah, it's, it's all, just, yes, it's very it's LA. Very LA. It's very LA. Yes. yes. And all, it's all part of the family. Mm-hmm. Well, so David Warner spookily shows up spookily. and invites these kids to like, come to my private <laughs> He comes up, show. pops up from the fence. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, like, I got, I got like, wax people in here. You want, you like, want to come to it? He's yeah. like Snoopy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my I'm God. He is it. like the great pumpkin Snoopy. Yes, at the he's end. like Snoopy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been, would it have been cooler if we saw him rise? Yes. Yes. Loved yes, it if he yes. was just like a big puff of smoke or no smoke. No, no smoke. smoke. No, no smoke. smoke. You just do it in the background. Yeah. Yes. You have them framed in the front of the shot. Yeah. You in the background just, just rising like Snoopy. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. what I want. Mm-hmm. Yes. That All right. and, then, and then we would have given them credit for knocking off the peanuts Halloween special. Like, yeah. Bravo. Oh, Bravo. that's awesome. Like they, that... they reference so many other things in this. Why <laughs> yes. not reference peanuts? Yeah. You know? Yes. Come on. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They, they skipped one reference. Good grief. Yeah. Yes. Um, Willy Wonka pops up and it's like, hey, he is wearing a He's wearing a very Willy Wonka jacket. It's very jacket. purple. It's very I wish you would have done the somersault, you know? Right? That would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was with the... Uh, whatever. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you gotta he be, can't get hung up on a calendar. Yeah. 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 You just you gotta know? let it go. You gotta keep going. Uh, and this movie was so bonkers. Like, they could have done anything. And I'd have been like, all right. Sure. Yeah. How yeah. was it bonkers? Let's what are you talking it. about? Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> I think we get to bonkers. Okay, so we haven't got to bonkers no, yet. No, not yet. The scene that starts off with, like, Zach Galligan and his mom... In this, uh, you know, mansion, cause, yeah, because they're <laughs> eating wealthy breakfast, yes, at the other opposite ends of the table, you know, <laughs> pass the salt, yeah, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, Mom, yeah. when can I have coffee? When are you gonna let me have coffee? I'm an adult, <laughs> but thank God his butler Jeeves is on his side. What's Jenkins? Jenkins, Jenkins. Jenkins is on his Jenkins. side. Jenkins. Who is Jenkins? Because I've seen him before in other things, I don't if know. only like two other things, like yeah. caffeine, I've seen him before. caffeine, sir. Uh, your cup of, uh, <laughs> caffeine, sir. <laughs> Your Jenkins. nicotine, Sarah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Jenkins is great. Everybody Jenkins should have is the a best. Jenkins. Everyone sure. should have a Jenkins. I want a Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> it I, should be the new name te- for the your technically personal assistant. I, yeah. Technically, right. I think I yeah. am a Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah, your day job is being yeah. a Jenkins. Oh, I am Jenkins. I, I'm an assistant, technically. I'm Jenkins. Okay. All right. So <laughs> the idea here is that <laughs> we get all of these kids into the wax museum where every invited all of the, to come at midnight. 
Well, I mean, because did, it's a spooky one. Did yeah. he specify it was a black tie affair? Not at all. No. Because no, why did they dress like no. that? Because you're in Beverly Hills. Because they're rich college because, students. No, yeah, that, because they're rich people, and that's the only way they know. That's why I don't understand. Yes, exactly. That's why none of us are just like, why? Yeah. And he makes sure to tell them no more than six are allowed. Bring six yes. people. Because we, we need six. six. Mm-hmm. This is significant to the plot. True. Uh, they all show up. Well, two of them take off, and mm-hmm. they go into this thing, and so the the all these tableaus, these wax tableaus, are mm-hmm. uh, horror related. Sure, yes. it's all, and it's mostly was it literature or horror films that you saw mostly? Both. Represented? It was both. I would I say. Th- <sighs> Uh, uh, he he alluded originally. It he, to be he alluded he alluded to the fact that. Um, and they'll make anything into movies now, so I feel like his like the guy that the guy that created them. David Warren is going yes. straight literature. He's going feel? straight literature. Yes. I think yeah. the director is referencing his favorite horror movies, yeah. but I feel like get, the character right. is referencing his favorite horror literature. Right, because yeah. there is no. Uh, well, no, I guess Invasion of the Body Snatchers was Body uh, Snatchers yeah. is in there, but it turns two into movies, right? yeah, uh, Little Shop of Little Shop of Horrors. Horrors. Feed me. <laughs> yeah. So there's all this stuff. I mean, you see Jack the Ripper, yeah. you see the right. Invisible Man, you got the Mummy, the Wolf Man, see what Frankenstein. Sh- what I think should have ended up being the Friday the Thirteenth thing, which is what they wanted yes. to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The guy with the I axe. I heard that actually. That yeah. uh, an early draft of the script had Jason Voorhees yes. and a mask, you know, hockey right. mask, but because of rights and all that, yeah, they, didn't they couldn't do it. clear that. Obviously. Mm. Yeah. So they went with the classic uh, uh, monsters. Yes. Hickok said that he was doing an homage to the Hammer films. Of, yeah, you know. mm-hmm. obviously, the yeah. The whole movie yeah. has this kind of like fifties mentality to it, which is it something yeah, it does. That like grease vibe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It yeah. really it's, it's is. The, yeah. It's the dialect of the 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 hoity toity back in the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, but they're written all of them, even though they're twenty years old. Talk like they're yes. from the fifties. Yes, yeah. you know? exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. God, they, when they were sitting on the bleachers and that first I was like, they're going to bust into song any minute right? now. And like the, like the way it was framed, it even set, it felt like something more was going to happen there, the way it yeah. was set up. I've seen so yeah. many Ooh. movies where there's kids sitting on bleachers. Thank God. I have even, only seen uh, Grease once in my life. Life. But it wasn't just the bleachers. It was the fact that they were cutting between the bleachers and the people on the football field and that and like and the people yeah. walking through the frame. The illegal like, yeah. hitting like, or whatever. Well, was going yeah, Caesar's going to be pulling the mask <laughs> exactly. off the catcher at some point. Yeah, like, right. Whoosh. Well, yeah. well, the, it, the in the first act of Grease, when they're saying the bleachers, the football team comes out and practices yeah. and they cut back and forth the same way. And then people walk yeah. into frame on the bleachers. Yeah. Like, just, it was exactly like Grease. It really was. Even some of the dresses were really fifties looking in well, some of that scene. Yeah. That that, but also you have to remember that in the eighties there was a lot of throwback to the fifties. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. A- yeah. the eighties yeah. to fifties connection. Yes. That is a thing. yes, yes, yeah. We, we keep saying that before. we're bringing that up. We're hitting it home. I think like yeah. every time yeah. you listen to this, that yeah. like where you think right now, contemporary twenty nineteen is looking back thirty years to the eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the eighties, everything looked back thirty years to the nineteen fifties. Mm-hmm. They did heavily yes. influenced by it. very much. Yes. Um, but what the deal is, is that uh, when the kids, you know, are transfixed by these wax figures and when they step past the little barrier rope that's supposed to separate right. you from them, the red rope, they actually enter into the world of that. the scene. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is what the whole the meat of the movie is. The reason yes. why you're seeing it, the reason mm-hmm. why they wanted to make it the is basically the director can stage many homages to all of these yeah. uh, classic films yeah. in yes. his one film. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. As we uh, like, said think, out loud during the movie, yeah. like this is a great way to do an anthology. Yeah. It's, it's a great way to like get every little piece of the things you love into one movie. Mm-hmm. It really, it really is. is. It's a great way to do it. So you guys no. are digging it. Don't yeah. tell me. Oh, no. I'm kind of mad I didn't think of it, later. honestly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Damn, that's a good idea. Like, it's you, a good idea. Because like the waxwork is basically just a museum at this point, right? It's a museum yeah. to like to be a portal to the stories you want to tell. Right. Sure. A portal damn. is a good word. No, uh, it is. Because they step through a portal. God damn it. I want someone now. And maybe this is just me. You have to tell me. There are no. Still works. Right. That whole blue, like, portal yeah. thing that he goes through. It's a yeah. Room. And it, the way it's like, it's this hand animated kind of thing. Yes. Like, I want to see that again. I, you know what? I do too. <laughs> like, I see so much CG shit. It's like, it would be startling right. to see someone do something right. like that. I honestly yeah. thought it was. They would just go through, like, clean or there would be yeah. like like they're disturbing the air or atmosphere around them yeah. nobody's just gonna be like 
Blue portal lines, please. <laughs> I, like, I would that would be I would be so surprised to go into a movie and have that happen and be like, oh Jesus shit. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're doing it something. Bad yeah. in the it's era a physical of CG? barrier. I don't know. I thought it looked pretty good in, in this movie. movie? Right? I thought That's it looked what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 No, it looked good. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna say it looked, it looked really yeah. good. Yeah. Especially like when we got to a point where Zach Galligan's uh can't get through it. Oh, and, and he like smashes into it, yeah. Right, and he's pressing up against him. Like this looks really good. Yeah, I like, thought so really too. They're really doing very well. At this. I feel I believe like it's a force field. I get it. Yeah. It looks like yeah. I force felt field. it. Like they did well. Yeah. I feel yeah. like the only modern version we have of that is like the new Tron. The Tron Legacy movie might have had some things like that. Is, are there barriers in that thing? Uh, I yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of stupid stuff in that movie. <laughs> but like that movie, everything about that movie looks so fake that you never really bought into the reality of that movie because literally everything was. Mm. That's God a, damn it, Michaela! I love uh, that you're, movie. Yeah, so I killing him. I don't. I mean, no, like, okay. <laughs> it. I don't think that movie's meant to do anything other than look cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I think that's some, the only yeah, thing that movie's that's trying why to they do. Make movies. Just yeah. like this looks. Cool. That reminds me, though. Do you guys remember Garrett Headland? Oh yeah, of course not. Right. Yeah, he's in uh, Tron Legacy. <laughs> yeah. And what has he done since then? Uh, so I'm saying, he's the, the stable road. of forgotten uh, white did guys. Tar- did he do the Tarzan? What's the movie you went and saw? That- didn't he do what that? What did I say? Tarzan? Charlie Hunnam. No. That's, was that Hunnam? No, yeah, yeah, Tarzan yeah. was Alexander Skarsgård. I don't know what, what you're talking about. about. Lost City of Z. Lost City of Z. Oh, Wasn't was that Charlie Garrett Hedlund? No, it was Charlie Hunnam. God yeah. Damn. See, what did Garrett Hedlund do? Yeah. Nothing, because he's banished to the stable of forgettable white guys. He's hanging out with Sam Worthington. Yes. Well, there's something I've seen Garrett Hedlund in. Holy shit. Hold on. Okay. Okay, you do that. You keep digging for the next hour. Hour, Sean. I'm gonna dig into the Garrett Headland <laughs> backstory. You just continue on. Well, I'm gonna first, do my work. The first one of these. Next week vignettes. we end up watching a Garrett <laughs> Headland movie. Yeah. Sean's like, uh, Sean's gonna go to bat for Garrett Headland for some reason. Yeah. That's yep. who you're gonna die on. This he is did this one die movie on I really liked. Four Brothers with Marky Mark and was uh, he in that too. Uh, yeah, that's it was, a good yeah. movie. You stop. <laughs> that, that was that's before good, Tron. No. It is, but that's a good movie. That is a good that's movie. A, <laughs> I'm, right. saying so, it's not. I'm saying it's before Tron. But back to yeah. this movie for the folks who are listening at home. The uh, so the first sequence is a werewolf uh, sequence. Yeah, yeah. Where- and, that, awesome. and I think that was my first like moment of surprise. Yeah, same in this movie because this is where you're like, oh, it's not going to be about some guy like encasing people in wax. Right. I was like, what? Why are we in a werewolf movie? What is happening? It was yeah. very jarring in the you know in the best way. <laughs> John Reese Davies turns into a werewolf. Oh yeah, Dana Ashbrook from Twin Peaks. From is Twin in this Peaks, movie. that's right. Uh, he played Bobby in Twin Peaks. He's in this. He gets trapped in this scenario. Yeah. And John Reese Davies turns into a werewolf. A pretty good fucking movie werewolf. I yeah, thought. I liked it. I thought it was solid. I, liked I thought it, it looked pretty the cool. The ears are. Uh, there's a lot of ears in this, but on that, yeah, it's good. It's not bad. Oh, they're even, but yeah, they, but they the, move. They, they do. Yeah. They move and everything. Like it's not. I like it but more than yeah, I liked other werewolves. It's. It was that like um. As it, it was kind of yeah. cheesy, but in a good yeah. way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, there's a moment yeah. where the werewolf, I think, like the guy, one of the, somebody breaks into the. It all takes place in a cabin. Yeah, he breaks in and breaks a chair over the werewolf. Yeah, and the werewolf turns to him and brushes off. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So this is telling you the kind of the tone of the movie that you're sure. watching. Not too yeah. serious, of course. Like. Um, yeah, this is not a yeah, serious not, movie. Yeah, it's not too, yeah. uh, don't take it too seriously because we have uh, werewolves brushing shit off. But seconds off. after this, like another guy gets his head caught in the werewolf's paws, and the werewolf it's, like, yeah, it rips it apart. Rips him. In it's half. amazing. He splits down the middle. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, blood Bravo. goes flying everywhere. Yeah, now, this is we watched the unrated version. But is I think it, oh, did we? Yeah, yeah. It was. Oh, sure, yeah. There was. A, there was. A, this is. There's two different cuts of this. We watched the good cut. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. Where you got? It to felt see like it because their even there's apart. there's like uh, a cut two scene in this later on where there's a whole like everyone fighting together. Yeah. And there's a lot of blood spilling out of that dude's head. Yeah. It's just like a quick cut to him and then we're gone. So, yeah. Holy shit. So yeah, it felt like there was a lot added back into this one. But you know, this is kind of like the thing that you know, like you you, you miss. Maybe about this type of movie is mm. of this budget level, which I'm not sure what it was. It was like less than ten million dollars, I'm sure, at sure. the time. But the crazy amount of like imaginative gore effects, like yeah. where the fuck yeah. is that movie right now? Yeah. Mm. Now we do things for like a million point five or one point five million, and it's like a ghost in a house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and um, pretty tired it doesn't. Of it. it doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me at all. It's like horror movies. Nowadays, I mean, we, we talked about this last week. They don't have any balls. 
They don't they don't do anything with gore. We watch you know the TV shows that we're all watching has a shit ton of gore. We're all watching Game of Thrones mm-hmm. has a lot of gore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But horror movies uh, all of a sudden don't Hannibal? have gore. I yeah. don't uh, understand. A fucking NBC show yeah. has more gore yeah. than I've seen in horror movies. Seriously. Recently. Not only that, but that show was like successful and beloved. Like yeah. that show like did well. Yeah. 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 It was it was a, a goopy, it, goopy show. It is. Excellent show. Yeah. yeah. Can't recommend it enough. That was one of those shows I was like, I can't eat while I watch this. No, like, uh, but you want I tried. to eat while I you're tried. watching it. You're just like, I'm hungry yeah. for oh, whatever yeah. lungs he's preparing oh, yeah. in this one. There is a yeah. cookbook. Did we establish yeah. that for people? Yes, that there's there's the, the Hannibal, Hannibal cookbook. cookbook. Because everything looks so delicious. I have not watched one second of this show. Really? Oh my uh, God. It will make you uh-huh. want to become a Holly, culinary chef. Like yeah. It? Would I? Possibly yeah. a serial like killer. I believe you. You want to borrow? He it? makes a human heart okay. look amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, really? right. I would yeah. eat his lungs because they got like a guy, like a chef, to come they in did. and actually show them how to prepare all these. Oh, guys. nice. Um, the makeup effects in this movie are done by a guy named Bob Keane. Bob Keane, uh, famously. Oh, did, oh wait, why do uh, I know this name? Hellraiser. Oh yeah, he yeah, yeah. Hand. He's been yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and uh, and like all the other creatures in that. Uh, sure. Clive Barker's Nightbreed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Event Horizon. Oh, this is, oh, cool. this is one of those guys who, like, you know, the the industry changed and went digital and put him out of a fucking job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Which reminds me, the Shame. Unholy, the Unholy with Ben Cross. Anybody see that? That's a Vestron. Uh, I don't think so. I He's like it. a priest who has to go to this church where like the succubus did, comes did, up. Did and, Rawhead Rex pee on him? Like this, <laughs> no, she tries to seduce him, and uh, if he gives himself over, then the devil comes up. Uh, it's, a, it's not a bad move. Um, as long as no one gets peed on him, it's fine. I don't think so. Okay, good. Um, but uh, yeah, so the visual effects gives us a werewolf story. What else do we have? Yeah, um, we got a vampire story. Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. Sexy uh, Dracula. Snake Tartar. That guy is, uh, nobody <laughs> saw gross. Tarzan the Ape Man with Bo Derek. Nope. No. He was Tarzan. Kind of want to. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it's one of the worst movies ever made. All right. Well, right. keep talking. So, so, right, yeah. <laughs> so it's right up our alley. Yeah, right. Okay. It's bad news. <laughs> Tarzan. Um, there's, uh, okay, I can so see him being Tarzan. That's we've got the, uh, we've got Marquis de Sade. God, yeah, yeah. yeah we we got to leave him for last. Yeah, all right. Yeah, something geez. to talk about. We got there's, the got a mummy. There's a mummy scene. The mummy. Oh, mummy true. crushes dude's head with his foot. Yeah. It's gross. That so, was gross. It's like Colin's version, best version of the mummy. It feels like that's, like, that's anyone's what, best feel, version. Well, right. Of the yeah. mummy. It's like, like we want the was, mummy to like fucking crush people's heads. Yeah, yeah. And, then, so. and that's not a cool only mummy. And not yeah. only that, but like the mummy's face is exposed and it's gross. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Everything else is wrapped and the mummy just like. It's yeah. Holly, didn't you point out? Wasn't there some sort of like. Slime coming out of his there mouth. Was like fell a, in the there was like mouth. a black slime coming out of his mouth, and the guy that was on the ground, it fell into his oh, mouth. Oh, it was so oh, gross. That's the worst. <laughs> oh, uh, it was <laughs> so gross. Oh, it's not good. Ugh. Uh, that's the moments that work. Well, even in the Dracula scene, like you guys were kind of like because uh, there, they they bring the girl into the awesome. table <laughs> and they serve uh, raw meat, you know, quote unquote yeah. steak tartare. Yeah, which that's how but she. But it's not just it. raw meat; it's in like a blood, a blood sauce, sauce. Yeah. like yeah. it's bloody a meat blood sauce. This is some highfalutin like restaurant would be like. We have uh, a tuna in a blood sauce. <laughs> what you like this is what they would do now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Purposefully yeah, yeah. in a red sauce. Right. Yeah. Madam. Mm-hmm. Yes. But no. And they're all, but they were all when they were eating it. They're all like slurping it. Oh, it's the I, it was there so was a gross. lot of silverware nope. clanking too in that scene that I was not. It's one of those ones where I can't look at it. I'm just like I turn to the sound. I'm like all right. I Could you still this. hear it though? The, I yeah. don't the sounds it. are too much. But I can't yeah. look they at it. They were slurping it, and the like combination is not good. Oh, and it was just be like, it was Bruh. all over their mouths, uh, and it was dripping. No. Oh, Mm-mm. it was so gross. No. It's kind of effective, even though it's very the effective. sets, I think, like eventually she wanders down into the basement, finds her, uh, who is supposed to be her fiance, with yeah. half of his leg <laughs> eaten I away. Like yeah. I like it's it. It's like this bare exposed bone and there's a rat munching at it. He's like, oh, right. But his foot is still there, which yeah. is what I love. I yeah. love that, yeah. that barren space between, you know, like knee and I love foot. that. I love that that was the moment that he couldn't take was the rat gnawing on his bone. Right. He's like, yeah. when, if, when he finished, he's like, OK, I'm fine now. Yeah, right. like, I yeah, love yeah. I love that right. actor and this yeah. scene because it yeah. really comes across. It's great, and I can't. I don't think I can describe it in a way that like does it justice. You should watch it because it's, it's just it's because he gets he's like per- he's tortured, but then he gets back gets back to his like he's perfectly fine, perfectly fine British tone. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, because I think like she pulls the rat away. Oh, thank you, oh, thank, thank you, right. thank yeah, you. He's so very British. It's like no, and, uh, thank, no, your oh, calf you. muscle no. is still have yes. removed no, from your, your leg. leg. Is still gone. You should it's be still so gone. Able to walk. <laughs> all the time. No, no. He's like, I'm fine now. Now the rat's gone. No, <laughs> no. I loved it when your leg's in, gone. <laughs> she gets into a fight with the vampire and he, and he falls, like, falls on, on yes. the guy's leg. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only time he feels pain. Everything else is fine. Yeah, you know they were eating his leg. Yeah. Right, no, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, got it. A, yeah. There's a ton there's of blood a lot, in that scene, too. a lot of meat too. there. Yeah. They yeah. have a, a recreation of like some of the arterial spray from like Tenebrae, the white wall. Yes, with the, the Tenebrae blood yeah. spray. Yeah. Blood yeah. spray all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, glorious mm-hmm. stuff. Good stuff. Uh, there's <laughs> also a uh, Night of the Living well, Dead. With the, the Brides of Dracula. We can't forget uh, well, about yeah, what yeah, happens. Yeah, they all yeah. come in, yeah. Yes. They yeah. come in and they all get impaled on the champagne wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the champagne corks pop through their bodies and spray out the holes. They were soft it bodies. Genius. Awesome. I genius. Was, I heard a... <laughs> Yeah, I heard. Was, I heard that was a brilliant idea it because was great. You, to clean off the face of your heroine who's covered in blood, covered, yeah. you yeah. spray champagne at her and it cleans her off yeah. for the next scene. Idea. Genius, yeah. it's know. good. Yep, like, and well, I, I was, and like at first you just think it's like a wall of wine, so it's just gonna like you know they're gonna get impaled and that's it. But no, it's champagne, so the corks are gonna pop <laughs> yeah. off and it's gonna spray everywhere. <laughs> It was festive. Genius. <laughs> was Love that it. the yeah. first scene, or maybe not, where someone bumped into a wall of the set and you got to it see it? It wiggled a little, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. That I seemed to that happen too. a lot yeah. in this movie. It's, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> this movie. But you could you could make the argument that um, it is just the actual set in the museum. True. Yeah, true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Right, because yeah. we are in a. It, it is like it's yeah. a, a, a sideshow museum. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's that's, well, it's what, a high reality to this area that we're in. What is going on here? Why are all these people getting sucked into these uh, portals? Because what? they're trying to. David Warner is trying to fulfill like his. He's got different setups for his wax figures, and he's trying to. Uh, I, I I suppose get people to inhabit his um installations like to fulfill some sort of well didn't they say that he's like trying to summon the devil or something are we trying to summon someone if we fulfill all wasn't these things, that we're the to reason that there was like in, he needed six people and there was six there are six something. open positions in his wax work he needed that a total to of 18 because right. he killed apparently when he was younger yeah. Yeah. the opening scene in the movie where dude like melts his head in a in a fireplace right is David Warner steals these right, that's where objects he's, he's stealing yeah. everything, held yes. by these fantastical creatures over yes. time. Right. He puts them on wax versions of them, and the hope is that once he has 18 victims, yes. they'll all come alive and apparently destroy uh, the world. Yes. Okay. I mean, like, bravo. I mean, sure, this is sure, you know, sure. how you do it. If what you is... destroy the world, forget nuclear weapons and shit. Right. You turn monsters loose on everybody. That's how you do it. They just go out and tear everybody apart. I wonder what yeah. uh, David Warner's uh, end game is for destroying the world. Like, what does he get out of it? Just the is the destruction of the world all he needs? I think it's satisfaction. Is that, it? is that the satisfaction? Yeah. yeah. That You've it? got a hole okay. in your soul. When yeah, you're it's the character. cabin right. in the woods ending. Yeah. You know? it's, the hole in my soul is it. killing me forever, as mm-hmm. Aerosmith would say. Or maybe he gets to be the right pinhead's right hand man. Maybe. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, they. Uh, oh, and then uh, sorry. There is the. Well, then they go to see before the marquee decide. Which I mean, like in my memory, looking back on this movie, like I remember that character as He's like more prominent. Than I, yeah, more than I do He's like the f- Night of the Living Dead yeah. sequence. And Zach uh, Galligan. Gets that was a in. quick sequence. Yeah, it's quick, really, but it's also quick. a cool sequence because it's in black and white. Yeah, I dug so it. I like that was that. cool. That was real cool. Yeah, it was yeah. very cool. I like that they go back like old school for it. Yeah. Like, don't do it in color. And the, like the camera angles, like, yeah, that was right, cool. Yeah. It yeah. looks like old. It's it does. Yeah, it looks like it. Cool. It looks I like it. Like that. that is the whole point of this, right? It's right. It's like homage. The yes. whole movie oh, is yeah, homage. It's yeah. very much homage. Before it. Yeah. Somebody said it was like one of the first like uh, self-referential horror movies. Right. Very mm-hmm. But I mean, I think like Friday the 13th Part 6 was there before this. That was 86. Is that a self-referential horror movie? Part six? Yeah. Jason lived? Yeah. The kids in that movie know they're in a slasher movie, kind uh, of, right? Everybody. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've yeah. seen enough horror movies to know that maniacs and a right, yeah, yeah. never she, friendly. You, right. The kids are like. She knows you know, that, yeah. So what were you going to be? It's getting there. Grow? Like we're on. It's a in, in a journey. We're on our way. Like we know that we're going somewhere. So okay. we've realized it and we're starting to comment on it. 
But this, this does, one is yeah. like we're gonna take scenes from movies that you know. Right. But this and is also make a movie right. Out well, of this it. is also referencing like uh, much older versions of that. I mean, they obviously had the idea from because uh, Friday the Thirteenth was supposed to be a part of this. They wanted it to be. They just couldn't get the like the clearance to do it. So, but obviously they're looking back at movies and they're referencing those. So yeah, it's part of it. Well, they have to go and um, uh, consult Patrick McNee, wheelchair bound mm -hmm. Uncle Wilfred. Mm -hmm. Wolfie. Wolfie, he has people to call him. Surprising fact about Patrick McNee. Mm -hmm. You may remember him from his scenes in A View to a Kill, the James Bond movie. But in life, he was an uh, enthusiastic nudist. Bravo to that oh, man. Good for him. Well, all right. I mean, why not? <laughs> you only live once. Right? <laughs> So <laughs> you, you only die twice. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, the uh, yeah, but so he basically was friends with Zach Galligan's. Uh, no, it was, it was, it's his uncle. So that was his father. Yeah. Yes, Zach Galligan's father. Uh, we're part of the society that fights the monsters, and yes. he has the talisman or something, whatever he knows. Like you got to go stop them. And here's the swords and whatever yeah. that we used right. back then. I don't know. And I felt haphazard at that point. Just like, this is what you used to fight him. It's just like, ah, okay. Yeah, this is your <laughs> grandfather's sword. Yeah. The monster it, fighting sword. It felt last minute, but okay. Yeah. It seemed to work. So Zach Galligan has to go with his girlfriend. Is she his girlfriend? Not, the, uh, not he, this one. Not at this point. Sarah? This is, is Sarah. Is this one Sarah? Yeah. yeah. Sarah this is, is not his this girlfriend. Is, this is the one that she was like, I, I like him and want to be with him. And then when he tried to put a move on her, she was like, oh, no. Just kidding. But, not, no, but I want Sarah something more. The virgin, virginal, virginal. Yes, the virginal, 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 uh, virginal. Uh, member of the group. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Zach, his uh, actual girlfriend, like uh, in gets China. Ar gets around. China, China gets around. China yeah. gets around. <laughs> she's the one who falls prey to Dracula because she's looking for something like Dracula. I yeah. get it. <laughs> Sarah is like, no, no, no. How is all for this? Yeah, I I'm can't down. Be with you. I understand. But she is riveted by this wax figure of the Marquis de Sade. Yes. And yes. steps into that. And I'm a like, lot. okay, this isn't a horror movie that I've seen. So she's freaky. She's very freaky. That's what we're saying. So before there was <laughs> 50 Shades of Grey, right? There was the Marquis de Sade. There was waxwork. <laughs> is where like, I'm going. <laughs> it, I mean, you know what? I'm going to draw that direct connection. Yes. It went, it went but, from this to well, that. There's waxwork, then 50 Shades. Yeah, yes. you're, you're kind of like... C connecting different dots though because Marquis decided was a real person there yeah. were real books that really existed yes. so right. that's why I was like there's yeah. the line yeah. Yeah. Marquis yeah. decided to Fifty Shades okay, yeah. but, but Fifty yeah. Shades oh, yeah. is like uh, diluted a thousand times yeah. down okay. All right. yeah. you got me you got yeah. me in cinematic history though mm -hmm. Wax worked in Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, that's I think a little uh, bit of indecent. I think proposal. 120 that's Days of Sodom connection. probably falls okay, in there somewhere you know the, that was actually the book he wrote you know to add a few things yeah, it's fine. so there's but like I feel this... like you're you're making it sound way worse than it actually is by well, drawing that direct connection. I'll tell you. Compared way worse to his, like this movie. Yeah, this movie's nothing compared to his actual book. Well, and yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. no, no, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. So no, to, I agree. To connect those dots directly, I think is sure. giving well, this movie a lot more credit than, for like mainstream yeah. film. Like, but there's a lot of focus on this portion of the movie. Yeah, I yeah, had this seen scene is in a 1988. Scene. I was surprised to see that. Like, this was like one of those first. Like, whoa, this is so. This girl's getting whipped, right? She gets willingly beaten. Yeah. By the Marquis de Sade and has an orgasm at his touch mm -hmm. during this. I mean, it's and not only that, it's hell. talked about. Yeah. And the uh, uh, Zach Allen has to pull her away from this whole situation, like forcefully. Like, we're concentrating on this part of the movie. Because none of the other ones go back to that character as much. And he, so he becomes the de facto, like, villain head mm -hmm. for Basically, the yeah. end of the movie, which. I don't know if this is good for the movie or not. Where like you are setting up this David Warner character is like he's the evil uh, genius puppeteer, whatever. Oh, he also has a diminutive uh, manservant sure. and a guy who looks like Lurch from the. Right, Adam he's Sarah. going all sizes. Sure, yeah. Um, the little guy talks like a German. He is German, possibly. I think he is German. Okay, yes. uh, there's a lot of German influence in yeah. this movie. There is a lot of German. A lot influence of German in influence. Movie. Um, but. So the end of the climax of the movie kind of splits your villainy between David Warner and I suppose the Marquis de Sade sure. character is the more physical threat for our hero. Yes. 
A, his girlfriend clearly prefers the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> she is under some sort of pull. So, I mean, yeah, there's that. But, yeah, she clearly wants, you know. But, yeah, that, but that was that was each each character was pulled to a certain scene depending on Very what true. attracted them. Very true. So, she was under a bit of a spell, but it was a spell of her own making. Kind of, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah. Kind of completes a character arc for I right. guess like where she's exactly. Yeah. Um, it was in this moment I think when Zach Galligan is mm-hmm. challenging the Marquis de Sade because he figures out at this moment that uh, nothing is real mm. if right. you don't allow it to, and so therefore I can beat the Marquis de Sade and let him shoot me or do whatever the hell, and it won't affect me because I don't believe that he's here. Right. right. And during his impassioned speech, I was like. You cast the wrong guy <laughs> for this move. Uh, yes, <laughs> I see a lot of. Or at least give him. Yeah, a I think so. <laughs> yeah. like it's not the look that. So it took good for it took character. you three quarters to get to that conclusion because oh. I got to that conclusion the first cigarette. Yeah, oh. <laughs> so, like I've never seen an actor n- not want to put a cigarette in his mouth so bad and like just kind of like, like almost cringe at yeah. like the fact that they even have to hold it in their mouth. You like know? yeah, no, seriously, just him putting it in his mouth. I was like, he has never smoked before. I don't know. I've seen worse, but it's not good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's uh, like I don't know if he, that he's ever terribly convincing. No, well, I don't know if any of them are. There's <laughs> several no. dialogue, yeah, which right. yeah, is robotic and inhuman, right. but. It's like okay with the tone of the movie, maybe it works. Oh, yeah, like, I was like, their, I was like, their, I was like it yeah. honestly wasn't necessary for anyone to be all that great. Yeah, no, <laughs> but in, I mean, everyone it gets to the point where they're it's submissive and that works. But anybody can, I think, play submissive. At I a think so. Point. Yeah. Like that's the easiest. But he's supposed to be to assertive play. at that. At well, this, no, right. At this well, one well, moment the, in the movie, I think anybody else is submissive. Like it, like all right, that makes sense. But anybody being assertive, like you said, is not. Great. Not not, in, not is that great. Galligan's uh, no. forte. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't think so. Beyond no. his range or something. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, it's but more he reactionary. does. He wins the girl back, and then there's this big. Uh, and then Sir Winfred shows up. Wilfred. Wilfred. And there's Wolfie, this huge. Yeah. Wolfie. Yeah, Wolfie. 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 Well, because uh, the 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 David Warner's character ends up uh, completing his set of eighteen. Technically, right. he does. yeah. And all the monsters come alive. In this grand finale, wonderful. Which, ironically, yeah. uh, apparently they had uh, 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 Anthony Hickox had set up four days to shoot this sequence, where they were supposed to jump through a bunch of exhibits. Is this the "don't sh- wait till the end to shoot your ending" of the movie yeah. type situation? Yeah, because apparently the they ran out of money, and yeah. the completion bond guy showed up and said, "You got twelve hours to end this thing." <laughs> yeah. On day one, it's like, okay, yeah. twelve hours, and you're out, and we're shutting you down. Jesus. He's like, I planned for like, I can't remember if it's three or four days, mm-hmm. and they were supposed to go through the the exhibits being chased. Sure, through you know, that would be so cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. Well, guess what, Michaela? I mean, what we you got was sequel. still fine, but we got waxwork too. Oh, no. Two <laughs> lost in time, yeah. Okay, but uh, before we talk about that, all right. So the climax of this movie, I mean, it is basically like uh, what it's a rumble. Was... It's a big fight. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's big, a battle it's... royale of yeah. horror characters. Yeah, it's, it's Anchorman, the fight in Anchorman. <laughs> yeah, it is the fight. <laughs> I was going to say it was the rumble in uh, the Outsiders. At the yeah, there it, it is. The Outsiders. It is. Up for the fist fight. It really yeah. is. Both it, of those analogies are perfect. Yeah, I was works. surprised. I guess like this time watching it, knowing that this was something that was forced on them at the last minute, you know, yeah. and the, you got a lot of people like probably freaking out. Yeah, going like we got to do this. Like I was still able to, even though like when you watch it with that in mind, you're like there are some shots where it's like clearly this moment was made in the editing. Like sure, I think there's somebody slashing at somebody with a hatchet, where like you see the hatchet in close up, but in the the close up, or sorry, in the the master shot, they don't have a hatchet. They're just hitting somebody. Yeah. So like the oh, editor yeah. was like, "Let's put a hatchet in their hand. Mm-hmm. We'll just cut it really fast. You yeah. won't be able to tell." Yeah. Oh yeah. It's great stuff like that where an editor basically saved the end of this movie, but it does kind of pay off these little moments for all the characters. You know, it's like uh, you do have these uh, moments where there somebody's getting grabbed by something. And then the other character is, you know, steps in there and, you know, and you get to see yeah. Dana mm-hmm. Ashbrook dead and all the uh, characters that have, you've seen throughout the movie. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, until Uncle Wilfred, you know, comes in to save the day, David Warner goes in the big vat of wax, and uh, poor Uncle Wilfred gets his uh, his head ripped off. He, he does. does get his head ripped he gets off his werewolf, by the werewolf head. Oh, yeah. yeah, werewolf hands. Yeah, because they got to keep off. all these creatures from actually leaving the building because sure. they would take over the. That world. would be the thing. Yeah. That's what they decided. Just like as long as no one leaves the building, we're fine. Is it written in stone somewhere that a wax a movie that takes place in a wax museum must end? With the whole place on fire. Fire, I think so. I it mean, I see the wax melts. Yeah, so the wax, wax melts. Yeah. Like it wax just melts. makes sense. Did we see that? It makes sense. Not really. No, no not in this movie. we didn't. No, yeah, we I don't just remember. see fire, and then they escape. Uh, but that's not yeah, the, end. the only the only references to wax in this is the big vat of wax, and then when he's like chipping at her face to see if she's really wax, right, which like is that's cool. really it. In the title which card, I like. and the, the title, title card that melts like the title card. Which I love. That's right. We <laughs> forgot about it. Well, just to mention the, that scene. I do like about, that, yeah. Because that was like, they did that in House of the House of Wax remake. Yeah. Uh, Jared Padalecki did that whole thing, too. With Paris Hilton. Mm-hmm. With yeah. Paris Hilton. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, what, I mean, yes. what am I talking about? Man, <laughs> Padalecki was all over those mid odds horror was. remakes. Was he? He was, was he in two? He Friday was in 13th. that one. Yeah. And Friday the 13th. Oh, that's right. And yeah. uh, the other guy. The other supernatural guy, Jansen Eccles, was Jensen in Eccles. Uh, My, My Bloody Valentine. My Bloody Valentine, yeah. Yep. Those are the guys, yeah. yeah. They were doing Supernatural and still felt the need to do those movies. I would. I hope, I hope <laughs> just get a movie career. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm gonna take a break it hasn't worked that way for him, though. But I don't think they're looking for a movie career, maybe not, but they're like, we can, I can go do a Friday the 13th <laughs> yeah. in the like middle they of doing might... Supernatural. Yeah. Like, this can only be good yeah, for what I'm doing. But you ever notice how, like, everybody who's in a hit TV show, do you remember a movie called The Forest? No. Starring the, uh, Natalie Dormer, yeah, is that Natalie Dormer, the, the Suicide oh, Forest, yeah, yeah, the Suicide yeah. Forest, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Do you remember, uh, remember the other side of it. the door? No, that I remember the starred... warm side of the door. The other side of the door <laughs> from, had uh, what <laughs> from uh, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, the warm side of the door, <laughs> the warm side of the door. The music. Oh, uh, that's for later. Okay, I got to say, but the other side of the door had Sarah Wayne Callies. Callies from nope. The Walking Dead. Remember, there was Rick Grimes' wife in The Walking Dead. She got a movie. Uh, the boy had Laura. Good for her. Damn, Lauren boy. Cohen. Lauren Cohen. Yeah. Like everybody who's in a TV horror show gets a horror movie. Sure. Mm-hmm. It you only, get at least it, it, one. It adds. It adds mm-hmm. to your stock. At that Jared point. Padalecki got two. He yeah. got two. And still didn't work. He's a still didn't make because anything he's of a pretty it. man. Yeah. He's he pretty, pretty, well, pretty Well, to be fair, though, he wasn't the star of House of Wax. What well, was he? No, he wasn't. It was... Uh, no, he was like second second or third, because there's a certain point where somebody finds him as a wax figure and pokes at him. And shit, yeah, so. which is why we were talking about it, because right. that happens in this right, movie. Yeah, underneath the yeah, wax, so. there's you know, wax muscle. Too bad he couldn't get in on the Hitcher, huh? Maybe that would have been the one. Was he in that one? No, I, no. It, no, it was a guy. Was it was a like dude, a lookalike though. guy. Sean Bean is the is the hitcher, the hitcher in that one. Oh, right. Yeah, Sophia Bush is in that too. Sophia Bush yeah. is in that. Yeah. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Who the they gender flipped yeah, that I movie. Forgot, yeah, I forgot. Who That's the guy what was, was interesting about it. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I knew, him but at I the also time. don't remember who the main guy of House of Wax was. If it wasn't uh, it was, Jared Padalecki, no, it was it. Oh, who the main guy was? Yeah, because Elisha Cuthbert escapes with some dude. Right. Oh no, it's the guy from One Tree Hill. Chad Michael Murray. Chad Michael oh Murray. yeah, that's Chad right. Murray. It's her brother. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Chad Michael that's Murray. That's the guy who's yeah. the main guy. Oh. I was Jesus. like, it's another pretty guy. Why can I think that's of that? The guy. Those You're early odds WB yeah. boys were <laughs> all over yeah. that. That may not be true. known. You at get this to do point. one. You're on a hit show. Yep. You, you get, get one shot at a movie, specifically a WB show. Why people keep do like film executives keep thinking this way? They're hot. They're hot young on. We're gonna we're gonna give them a movie and they're gonna the career is gonna take off. We like, want those wasn't there, what, want those did Adam Bro- no. did Adam Brody ever do a horror movie? I feel yeah, like he it, was in uh, like Jennifer's did. Body. That's yeah, right. he was. Yeah, okay. Didn't they do like a Paris Hilton episode of Supernatural? I feel like they did. I don't know. I don't know. About I think that. they I haven't did. watched enough Supernatural to know. I think they did. I think mm. it was probably around that time. Yeah. I was wondering if that a synergy transferred to the OC and the network. Oh yeah, you know shows too because we. All the examples we mentioned were WB shows. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Yeah. Because like, uh, what's his name? Was not. Nobody from there was in a horror movie. I don't believe. From what? From the OC. That's yeah, Adam, Adam Brody. Brody. Adam Brody. Adam Brody. Uh, yeah. But he was the only one. Yeah. yeah. But he was like the exception. What's his name? Ben McKenzie's in Gotham now. Yes, mm-hmm. he is. 
Uh, I don't think he got his own horror movie. No, I don't mm-hmm. think I. That guy has no leading man presence. There's yeah. he, I, no, the fact that he's lasted this long in Gotham is is Jim Gordon is kind of fucking Although, miracle. You know, he was in Southland and he was very good. Mm-hmm. It just depends with that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, there was a wax work too, uh, and was. it was wax work lost in time. But unfortunately, Anthony Hickox was dating the lead leading lady in this movie, uh. Deborah Foreman, and then they broke up. So she said, I'm not coming back. For Wait, the which one was one. Deborah Foreman? The blonde? She was uh, Sarah, the virginal uh, okay. uh, interest of the Marquis de Sade. She survived. The heroine of the film who sure. survives because uh, the, the wax hand survives. I think the sequel picks up like right there the same oh, really? night. But okay. they recast the girl. and they As have the to, same character? Same character. Oh, okay. Because Uncle Winifred. Wilfred. Wilfred. Shows up on a, you know, like Doesn't recording. Care. And uh, no, no, I get it. Just, you gotta <laughs> just keep going. I'm leaving you your moment. Thank and you. then uh, Bruce Campbell is in a version of the haunting. Uh, they go through Alien. Um, God, what else was Wait, in that what? movie? Yeah, in Waxwork too. Really? Oh yeah, there's I'm an kind Alien. Of, kind there's of loving this. The haunting yeah, in black and white of, with Bruce yeah. Campbell. Zach Galligan goes through all these. Bruce fl- Campbell's in that. Yeah. Jesus. Why, why are we not movies? watching now? Yeah, Sean, movies, that's cool, too. Sean, spring of sequels. Yeah. Spring of sequels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next and, week, Wax for Two. Because I think like, it all hinges around like a talisman that the sorcerer has, and it's played by uh, the bad guy, not Hans Gruber, the blonde bad guy in uh, Die Hard. Jeremy <gasps> Irons. Oh. oh uh, for, uh, the dude from the, the is he? From White the, Knights. It's Alexander Gudinov, but I can't remember his name. In, uh, they cook Carl. They Carl? Carl's brother. Oh, Wait, okay. was it Carl or Carl. Carl's brother? Is that the dude from the Money Pit? I don't remember. Yeah. I think it was Max in the Money Pit. Okay. Long, anyway. Long yeah, hair. blonde hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hair. Okay. That's yeah, his yeah. face right there. He's the bad guy who uh, controls time. Yeah, that's Max. Okay. <laughs> in Waxwork 2, which was also directed by Anthony Hickox. You know his mother edited Lawrence of Arabia? No. What? His mother? That's right. That's wow. Amazing. Wow. That's amazing. That's an undertaking. That's wow. a long ass movie. It is a long ass movie. I think she won an Oscar. That's awesome. Okay, so those no. things aren't hereditary, huh? Apparently not. Because no. <laughs> then you end up toiling in Sundown, the Vampire Retreat, full oh, yeah. eclipse, <laughs> Warlock 2. Waxwork 2 sounds awesome. I know. I, I want to <laughs> watch it. <laughs> yeah, Bruce Campbell. I'm All right. sold. Well, I'm not. Next year, Waxwork <laughs> yeah. 2. On the summer of sequels. I'm just not a spring of sequels. Not, the, not a spring of sequels. I'm disappointed this is going to carry into this summer, too. <laughs> Do you know, Sean? Right? I, I'm assuming we're going to be doing sequels for the next six months, basically. You know, Seriously. Yeah, you know. I think oh. I'm going to give it up after. I think I've guessed spring. like half your list already. <laughs> I, don't I don't think you know. <laughs> I'm disappointed by the tagline and on this. What uh, is it? What for is wax it? work or for wax wa- work? Too? For wax work. Stop on by and give Afterlife a try. Oh, that's bad. That's terrible. That's, that's bad. bad. What was Sean had one while we were watching the movie? <sighs> we did think of, no, we did think of, there was a line in the movie that was like a great tagline for the movie. I, I do not remember, remember it now. The, the tagline for Waxwork 2 is a killer is waiting in the past, present, and future. That's bad. That's even These worse. These are all These, These are, are all terrible. Bad. Worse. These are terrible. <laughs> for, for what ends up being... Well, we'll, we'll they could have, yeah. But this, right, those well, were bad. They could have done so much more those with that. Bad. The suspense. Will we recommend Waxwork to you? You're gonna have to stick around and find you out. Will. But first, we're gonna answer some of your mail. And to do that, we need to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. I mean, he's kind of melting like a wise with figure. He always looks waxy. He, just, he yeah. looks like he's he just, just melting it's just and waxy. A, it's just a build-up. We're it's just not kind of used to it. Yeah, yeah. it's gross. We have, to clean him. Guy, we, have to, we have to clean him every month. I don't know if you guys know this. He's like, the guy I use to answer my door. No. He's your little butler. Okay. Little yeah. creepy well, butler. Well, I mean, dude. he does live here, so yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Can I borrow him next week? I got a, I got people coming over. <laughs> and I want, I want like to... Might as well make him earn his keep, you know? You're going to have to you're gonna have to clean him off first. You have to hose him down Can you a clean little him bit. Off, like him, just give him a no. hose down, like. So with with two, comes as is. Give him two coats of wax. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Ah. I quit. I'm done. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, we want to tell you how you can get a hold of us to write into our mailbag, and that you can do through Facebook. Facebook.com/slash/giantfreakshow. By Twitter at Sat Freak Show. 
uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. We're in or, line for this one. On oh, Instagram. we are. <laughs> We're on Instagram, too, at Saturday Night Freak Show. Hey, if you follow along on Instagram, you can see uh, stories that we do from when we're actually watching the movie. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Um, so MF Mad, the keeper. Of the, the keeper. Wall. Watcher on the wall. The watcher on the wall. On the wall. Yep. He says that we have added three people to the. Uh, <laughs> oh, on Jesus. top of your duty, man, right, right. dude, so he is go. on it. Right? I love it. Can we give him like a national medal of honor? I think or something? So, Seriously, right? he needs it. Yeah. We need to give him a little plaque. This is watcher on the wall. Yeah, right. we he really has, all right, do, sir. You have a plaque up next to the wall <laughs> that says watcher on the wall. Yeah. So you are with the wall. Yeah. Yes. Bravo, bravo. Uh, bravo. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, we've inducted Zach Galligan for the first time to the wall. Oh, of fame wow. He was in Gremlins. He was in Waxwork. And now he was uncredited as the boiler room patron who got stabbed to the paw <laughs> stick <laughs> in Hellraiser See? 3. Oh, wow. That's what I'm talking about. It's all, it's all quantity, never quality. <laughs> Did you guys know? I just found this out recently, and so it's kind of shifted my uh, pick list for this show. Did you know? <laughs> Henry Cavill and Adam Scott are in Hellraiser movies. What? Yes. I did not know that. Shut <laughs> up. Henry Cavill's in a video game Hellraiser movie. Shut up. Wow. Oh, yes. I'm very curious. I know. <laughs> Interesting. Listener, if you've seen those, please tell us. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Wow. I love Henry Cavill. Um, but like the Henry Cavill oh. one's not from like the mid 90s. It's not that long ago. I'm interested. Yeah. Adam Scott, more yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Well, uh, director Anthony Hickox is making his way to the wall because he was in wax work as not only the director, but he also starred as the English Prince. Okay. Don't. Don't the remember that. Uh, is yeah. Oh, who's yeah. Yeah. Oh, the redhead? Yeah. That's yeah. The director. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. Well, that doesn't count. You get one credit per movie. Okay. So mm-hmm. he director wax work. That's fine. Director Hellraiser three, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, he starred as Doctor Hickox in Return of the Living Dead. All oh, right. Okay. So he's All right. Wall. I'll take it. Okay. okay. But this is the good one. Okay. You ready? Okay. There's a guy named Buckley Norris in this movie. He Love played it. the Nazi Buck. loving. The professor. Oh, yeah. 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 That guy. I love that when they, when they were doing, like, they cut back to him doing the presentation. He's got his hands going. I'm just like, those are the same hands. The this picture behind him is Hitler <laughs> doing the same hand yeah. formation as yeah. him. I'm just like, this guy loves Nazis. It's he a German does. guy giving a class on the right. Nazis. Giving a class but on he Nazis. Has, he has, like, loves the flag up Nazis. in the classroom. Yes. He's he got, is. like, all this memorabilia. Was it, the Nazis. Was that a, was that a, a reference to a fucking uh, Dr. Strangelove? It got, it, I feel like it, it was of, the exaggeration of it felt a little bit like didn't it. Like it? They, they, the person they liked Strange Love. Yeah, because I he think does they did. That, uh, he does the salute, he, or, right? The, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Salute, and then oh, right. I've done it feels yeah. like. <laughs> yes, I was like, this is so Peter Sellers right but now. There's it also like a it. moment yeah. in uh, Dead Alive where I think they do something. I like think that they did, now, yeah. But, um, I but love Buckley Norris, the professor, he was also in Mac and Me. Oh, oh shit! Oh, no. As a highwayman, which uh, I don't recall. I don't remember, but okay. He's also, a guy a who character. almost got run over by a car. Yeah. As far as that movie, well, maybe goes. one of the poli- or maybe one of the FBI people chasing him on the highway or something. Yeah. Uh, and he was also an alligator as a character named Bob. So, Buck Norris, he's going to be on the hallway. <laughs> the hallway of right, fame. Yeah, you're getting there. Welcome to the hall. Okay. <laughs> well, about wax work, uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg writes in and says, This is one of my guilty pleasures. I have a really soft spot for it. So- Michael, right, we'll get to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah we'll get there. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I remember this being one of those movies that always unnerved me when I saw the VHS cover in the video store. When mm-hmm. I finally did get to see it, I remember it as a turning point because it made me realize that these types of horror movies are ridiculous in some level. Mm-hmm. Definitely one of the ones that helped me get over being afraid of horror movies. Yeah, that's, right. that's that. solid. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, Hanford McIver Lang. That's a great name. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for writing in. Thank you. Because that is a great name. Hanford McIver Lang says, Steak Tartar. Oh, yes. Yeah, steak Tartar. Oh, no. Serious question. What war- What was wardrobe thinking the first time the girls meet Mr. Lincoln outside the waxworks? That suit. 
Yeah, it's what I'm saying. The purple man. suit. Yeah, 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 I know. The purple yeah, suit was uh, wild. That is very, Willy Wonka. Very Willy Wonka. Joker, I wonder that's if that's very... what it was, right? Like, it see, had to be, say, right? We're throwing around Willy Wonka, but he's like, like, welcome it is. to it my is. Like, Yeah, he's, yeah, wa- he's walking down museum. Yeah, yeah, walking down the path to the fence. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. it's very Willy Wonka. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a thing. Mm-hmm. His suit is, we said, purple and orange and like all this is very, yeah. It's like shiny, too. It's very interesting. Uh, about soft. our movie that we did, uh, sorry, an episode a couple, uh, two episodes ago, The Rage Carry 2. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, during that episode, we Rage. said that uh, Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson uh, had done White Men Can't Jump and Money Train. Yes. Uh, have they figured out a third one? That's right. Shaky Subject Matter says Wildcats is the first Woody Wesley movie. I don't remember that one. I don't remember that one. Either. I don't either. I should have looked it up. Yeah, but this, but this, but this is why we, this is this why we is, ask. Right, this is yeah. why we ask yeah. you people this is why who we are ask. listening to fill us in on things we may have whist, missed. Wildcats. Wildcats. Interesting. Uh, Christian Steele we'll says uh, up close to the oh, because we said uh, that the Rage Carry Two was one of the most '90s movies that ever '90'd. Yeah. Christian Steele says up close to the top of that list. It, also for your consideration is Cruel Intentions, Urban Legend. Yeah. I know what you did last summer. Can't hardly wait. She's all that and Empire Records. This yes, feels like most I agree movies with I've all brought of those. to the podcast. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, this feels like just a list of Holly's favorite movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holly's favorite movies are the things Sean has brought to the podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we just passed Rex Manning Day. We um, did. Yeah. We did. Oh, Rex Manning Day. <laughs> Uh, Grant Parrish says, I've always, okay, so we were talking about, like, what's the difference between telekinesis and uh, psychokinesis? Yeah, 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 yeah. Grant Parrish writes in and says, I've always thought of telekinesis as my mind moves stuff, which requires perception. Psychokinesis as I put my intent into the object and it carries it out. Rachel hurtling the compact disc, that's telekinesis, but Mrs. Price's spell of substitutionary locomotion <laughs> would be psychokinesis, but Traguna. the dictionary says they're interchangeable. <laughs> Traguna, uh, okay. Recordes, Tricorum, I appreciate the research. I, I appreciate the research. I still don't really see the distinction. I, no, I, but okay. You know what? I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. I get it. I feel I get you. it. That's right. Yeah, right. Now, I understand the difference. I no, get he it. doesn't. No, no, no. <laughs> I do. There's one you're doing yourself, the other one you're putting the motion into. No, I get it. I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand. All right. And I'm all for it. Um, so we were talking, we had some issue at the end of uh, Rage Carry 2 about yeah. the um, the tattoo that kind of. Yes. Ah, yes. 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 Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, perhaps it was the same supernatural powers that made the Curse of Thorn tattoo appear on Michael Myers. I'll go with that. Uh, the Halloween uh, everything's sure. a thorn. Yeah. I'm yeah. all for it. I'm Shared for, universe between these that movies. Connection. That's let's fine. Do it. There's I'm no okay downside that. to that. They both yeah. came out in the 90s, right? Yeah. I'm okay let's with that. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Travis <laughs> Michael writes in, we were talking about, uh, I think her name was Rachel Blanchard, who played uh, the, she was uh, in the Clueless TV show. Yeah. And she was in the uh, Rage Carry 2. She yeah. had her eyeballs popped We like her. We like her. We like her, yeah. Yes. Uh, Travis Michael says, I recognize her mostly from the pilot episode of Flight of the Concords. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He oh, says, uh, although I did rent the Rage Carry 2 multiple times as an angsty teenager in the mm-hmm. 90s and probably mm-hmm. thought the henna tattoo vines during the climax were poetic. Probably. We all did. We all did. Back then, oh, yeah. We all did. We're not, we're yeah. not going to judge anybody. No. We Jonathan Holt said, uh, I rented Rage Carry 2 many, many times from my local blockbuster back in the day. Yes. When yep. Emily Burgle popped up on Shameless, I said to myself, oh, hey, it's that girl. <laughs> Having watched that movie, or I haven't watched that movie in years, but I might need to revisit it after Do listening it. to you guys review it. If for nothing else than to breathe in that sweet, sweet 90s stank. Yeah, it. dude. It was awesome. We, all re- hey, we recommended it. Yeah. Do it. Go for it. Well, he says he still can't tell the difference between the two London brothers, however. Yeah, it's difficult. I, you know, it's I really hard. hard. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to leave it to difficult. someone else to be like, no, that's, that's a Especially because they occupy similar roles all the time. They, they like, yeah. They're interchangeable. Can't do it. And neither one of them is working today. That's probably not true. I'm sorry. They're. Well, I'm probably, sure they're doing yeah. something, maybe. Was and it Jeremy that was on 7th Heaven? One of them's sick. Yeah, I think right? he's so. living off those residuals. Today, one of them's probably. sick. Ooh. Yeah, aren't they? Like, he was. One of them was sick. One of them was sick. I think it was... No, I'm not going to try. Know, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to yeah, try. I'm not going to attribute that thing. No. I was sick, I think. Well, okay. you know, Jimbo Ice is channeling my spirit animal because he says, I was succinctly in line with the age demographic of this rubbish 
I remember seeing <laughs> She's All That in 99 as a teenager, and the whole marketing shtick of Carrie 2 reeked of weak-ass teenage horror, mm. even in the wake of Scream, etc. It wasn't until Metro Detroit rental stores, shout out to Video Exclusive in Dearborn Heights, started carrying yeah. regional hits in the early aughts <laughs> that I started getting an international taste for modern slock. This movie is trash. H2O killed the callback horror of this generation, and gorehounds who don't fawn over 90 sleaze will be overwhelmed by the rage. <laughs> Carrie, too. God damn it. You got some opinions, yeah. sir. Holy I, shit. I like it's it. like you're speaking, like speaking my language. <laughs> I, right yeah, I think so. Uh, thank you, everyone, for. Yeah, yeah that was a very in. full like, mailbag. That was a full mailbag. That was a great I mailbag. I really love all of you who contributed. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're part of the Freak Show family. I love you all. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Now, uh, we're going to throw waxwork to I think the so. hounds right here on the table before us. Yep. And we're going to start by telling you what we thought of this movie. Michaela! Michaela! You. I know I'm in the hot seat tonight. What did you think <laughs> about waxwork tonight? Uh, so, I didn't really... Sometimes I look up the movies we're going to watch ahead of time. Sometimes I don't. This one, I like... Completely forgot what we were watching until Colin posted what we were watching <laughs> the day before. And I was like, oh, that's right. And I saw the poster and I saw the title. My first thought was like, oh, man, this is going to be like a late 70s, like Giallo. And then the it faith did, that they you know have what? in me. Like, <laughs> you know what? It didn't feel good. It yeah, didn't feel it didn't good feel coming good. into Waxwork. So, I, know, I could I'm, tell I'm last week that. when I was like, next week we're watching Waxwork. And you're like, oh, great. Yeah. It didn't feel good. Well, because I'd then never heard of it. This. I'd never heard of it. <laughs> no. And then I saw the poster and was like, oh, no. And uh, <laughs> But then when I found out it was 10 years more recent than I thought, really I got sure. my hopes went up tremendously. Sure. And then Because um, we got into the 80s, yeah, the sweet spot. Late 80s, too. <laughs> yeah. So, like, like things are in motion. Like, we've right. worked out how to make a we've good run the of the kinks. mill. Yeah, yeah. Like, we've worked out how to put minimal effort into a horror movie and still make it watchable at this point. Yeah. So, I'm like, okay. So we watch it, and this was not what I expected at all in the best way. Uh, I did not expect to see, like, the greatest hits of, like, Universal Monsters, basically. Yeah. Um, and Surprisingly so. And with a few other things thrown in there, too. And I really liked it, and I feel like this, like, I feel like if this kind of concept was rebooted now, like, you could make 10, 12 of these movies, because you could literally make yeah. it any sort of museum. Yeah. Exhibit you want, and then that's, that's especially the if they if, if a certain studio got it, who yeah, had the, who had the, who had the licensing, to, yeah, right, the licensing, and who yeah. had the rights to other monsters at that point, right? I feel like, I guess, I feel like our version of this movie now is like escape room, right? Instead of like it being actual like exhibits, it's just like situations, sure, you know, yeah, um, yeah. it's just circumstances you're putting right. in instead, instead of exhibits. Like, oh, this uh room's gonna collapse on you in spikes, it's yeah, like this room has werewolves, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. um but and I, I was really pleasantly surprised to see the werewolf, and I thought it looked really good, and I was really excited by that. Uh, it does like have a weird slowdown between the second and third act for mm -hmm. no right, reason because they do they yeah. do cut between like the first time you're introduced to all of yeah. the stuff, and then we're like back to high school. Yeah, and then we have to go back to college. Everything happened. It's right. college. Yeah, it's college. I'm sorry. <laughs> it feels like high school, but yeah, I you're know right. it's college. But it's yes. which is weird because it had really good momentum up until it's that point. Did. It, it kind of really lost did. it. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of lost it for no reason. Um, but mm -hmm. it was still really fun. It had a lot of creative things. It had a really good premise, which I don't think you can say about a lot of movies of its like weight class, right? Right. You know, of its time. And yeah. Time. Yeah. And of its budget range and of its like notability, you know, for it to have this good of a premise is really good. It's, it's, I kind of wish like, like I said, I kind of wish this was more like a bigger franchise. They could have the money to do licensing because like. Uh, like you get movies, the movies that get licensing to do things like this are like Ready Player One, right? Like then we had every right, single licensing, yeah. yeah, and yet it didn't do anything interesting with any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it sucks. It's either you have all the good ideas and none of the licensing, or all the licensing and no ideas. Yeah. Um, but it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. I'll be thinking about that champagne bottle stab and kill <laughs> for the rest of my yeah. life. Uh, I thought it was awesome. I think you got to watch it. I think it's like. It's a really, really watchable movie, too. Yeah. So definitely check it out. Sean. Uh, holy shit. Did I have a lot of fun watching this movie tonight? Um, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen this movie, but it's been 20 years since I've seen this movie. So I remember literally nothing about it. But uh, 
wow. Um, I had a lot of fun watching it. I liked how we went. It, it really was, uh, as we were talking during the movie, it's just like it's a, it's a tiny anthology of basically every little exhibit um, in the waxworks. And you get, you get uh, werewolves, vampires, you get zombies. You get everything from this movie. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, like, that's the key thing about this movie that makes it great. Um, you know, sometimes some of the acting is not so great, but you know, oh well. Uh, I think <laughs> yeah. uh, it really yeah. is. It's, it really is a side thing. It's a of minor it. it's like, issue. It, it is it a is. minor issue that the acting is not great because you get fucking you get uh zombies and werewolves and everything, and you get like people squishing heads, and you get the brides of uh Dracula and everything, and everyone's uh biting people, and you get a dude strapped to a table who half his leg is missing, and you know it's it it's like a fun movie. And I really enjoyed it, and uh, uh, I fully recommend this movie. I was really surprised by this movie, because like we said, I was going into this going, like, I I don't uh, remember this movie. I don't know what I'm going to get. This could be something really, it could be shit, but it was really good. And I think uh, anyone from, uh, anyone now could really enjoy this movie going back and watching it, because, you know, you get a lot from this movie. It's fun. uh, There's gore. Um, there's, uh, I, I don't think the only thing that might be missing is like nudity of any sort, but I don't think watching this, I never missed it. Cause so, it feels like it was there. The it feels, it does. Yeah. It feels like it was there, <laughs> but you know what? If it's not there, y- you'll be fine. Um, I really enjoyed this movie <laughs> surprisingly and I recommend it. Uh, you should definitely watch wax work. I had a good time. Uh, so there it is. Holly. Um, yeah, no, I think we, I think we all were literally on the exact same page throughout the entire process of this film. We all went into it kind of dreading it because we didn't know what to expect, but we weren't hopeful about it. And then... <laughs> I'm sitting right here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Colin. No, no offense. It doesn't matter because we liked it. We, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. We mean no offense. We just, we didn't know. But we didn't know. this movie this was... Could be, this could be yeah. for anybody who brings a movie. Yes. We, we didn't know. Yes. We didn't know. We've yeah, all been not a- just you specifically. <laughs> we, we didn't know. This has happened to all of us here. All of us. All of us. Um, For many years. And yes. sometimes it starts that way and ends that way. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, but this movie is fucking full of surprises. Like from start to finish, this movie had so much that I was not expecting. Um, you know, we... Uh, I think Michaela mentioned earlier a uh, uh, reference to Cabin in the Woods. This movie had like a Cabin in the Woods feel because True. that movie has everything. You know, it has all of your monsters, you know, all of your, uh, you know, the, the, the fucking encyclopedia of horror. That's what this movie was. You know, they it's really every scenario of all the classic monsters. And it it was so much fun to watch. It was... It was a fun house of horror in this really brilliantly constructed anthology. Um, and because it really it, gets to the yes. heart of everything we love about the different aspects of it, like, it, yeah. it really gets to it quick. Like, it's we, real we, quick. we got to a werewolf transformation and a werewolf, like, a fucking tagging real people, quick. Like, it got to it real quick. It jumps Just right like, in, yes, it, right, ju- cool. yes, it jumps right in. It's got a really great pace. I, I agree with Michaela that it's definitely got an obvious slowdown right in the middle for kind of no reason, like you said. Um, I don't, I, I don't really understand why that that's when they that go occurred. to get the cops, right? yeah, when they yeah. go to get, honestly, but for yeah, the cops are good enough to maybe make that. Slow yeah. down, okay? Because <laughs> they're the, just fucking ridiculous. It's the whole cops, Marquis, decide part of the movie. Yeah. It slows down a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but honestly, like, it it didn't really matter um, because it comes back strong for the third act, and it's just... So, it really does have everything. It's got your classic monsters. It's got gore. Um, it's it's funny in that in that cheesy way. It's not taking itself too seriously. It literally has all the things that I really love about horror movies. Like it's really just all of it packed together. It's so much fun. Um, yeah, it it has aged very well. I think anyone yeah. could watch this now and still have a lot of fun with it. And I, I agree. So. I, I wish there was more movies like this being made now. That would be so much fun. And I think it would be so cool if they got licensing to do this as a franchise. They could do so much with this. They could do, you know, different. I'm not going to go into that. But <laughs> that's um, how you get yes. all your versus movies, right? Yes. 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 Instead exactly. of doing the versus yeah. movies, do them all in one movie. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it really doesn't count. You can yeah. still do the yes. franchise. Yes. Right. And it's, this is yeah. like that's one-off. how you hack the yeah. system. It's the solution. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love Final that. Solution. <laughs> it really is. So, yeah, I do. I recommend the hell out of Waxwork. It was so much fun, for sure. Definitely watch it. Colin. 
Well, I mean, like, you know, I was not sure how this was going to go over because that's the thing. Whenever you pick a movie for the freak show, you never know. I sit there going like, well, I really like this movie, but, you know, and, and it's a lot of fun to me, but there are a lot of problems with it. I, you know, I look at it as a, if you look at it just objectively, it's like, well, they may have problems with uh, the performances. They may have problems with the slowdown. Sure. The pace isn't. <clears throat> When I first saw this thing, I think it was somewhere in the area. I mean, well, it was the werewolf scene. The yeah. werewolf scene is within the first 20 minutes. And that was when I'm like, okay, I'm paying attention. Yeah. Because you get yes. a pretty awesome movie werewolf. Mm-hmm. You get a, you know, yeah, he kills a dude by ripping him in half by his head. Yes. <laughs> you get John Reese Davies, which I'm like, hey, I know that guy. Yes. And then that's followed immediately by a werewolf transformation. And it's like, okay, well, we got the whole thing condensed into like five minutes. Yeah. And then the rest of it is like, I, cause I think what Dracula comes up next, next or whatever, which is less impressive, but at least there's a lot of gore and shit like that. Yeah. You know, mm. the spilling. That's what's fun about this movie. It is seeing all of these kind of, uh, yeah. cause at that point, after you see the werewolf and then you see Dracula, like who's next, yeah. you know, you get excited. That's, That's yeah. kind of where I, I guess there's a little disappointment because sure. some of the characters, uh, David Warner ends up just pushing them into the yes. Phantom of the Opera. We never get to see what happens. Uh, there was another one too. I think the, the, the mummy, the we see the mummy. Yeah, yeah, we, we see, see the, the mummy. mummy. But there were a couple others where they push him into it. Zom- well, we, we, get, get like, we get to see zombies, but then we, we get another guy yeah. pushed into zombies who ends up falling down. Yeah. And, and then them. later on, we get like quick cuts of like Jack the Ripper and like an al- like alien. And we get uh, we get a cobra, lot of the cobra. Yeah. It's humanoid. like the cobra dude from cobra Dream dude. Escape. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah this yeah, little yeah. baby from It's Alive. We I go, mean, like yeah. just looking around that room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We get it. Yeah. That's, that was the cabin in the woods moment yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you said that, I'm like, I'm like, it's because at the end all yeah. the monsters show up in her tag the best yeah, part yeah <laughs> and so it works even though it wasn't even designed to be that way that was happenstance i'm yeah. like this is kind of cool it's not uh necessarily a well-directed or well-made movie but its heart is in the right place and mm. it has it strikes the right balance of tone i think so and somehow mm-hmm. and it gives you these exploitation elements that you're looking for yeah. you know even though, like Sean said, I mean, the, the, it's sexy without being without right. there being it nudity. Is. Right. Yes. But there is like is. crazy graphic gore, and you know the the tone of it's kind of light and breezy, yeah. and it just kind of like who cares what the plot is? We're just trying to get characters into scenes from classic movies so we can you know do them yeah. again, right. and it's just a lot of fun to go on the trip and and watch it. Um, I mean, my memory says that Waxwork Two isn't as good, even mm. though it seems like there are more sequences because that's what obviously they lean sure. into is like that's what people liked about the first one so we're gonna do do more more of these yes. you know, I think yeah maybe jekyll and hyde or so i can't uh, remember there's several of them um but the overarching thing is like meh. uh or i just like the people because there's basically two people in the second one where there's right. six in this one um but yeah i really dig wax work uh i think you should check it out it's a lot of fun um you know, I mean, what, what more do you say? Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah, They're just like yeah, it's wax awesome. works. It's a, like, the Saturday it's good. Night Freak Show recommends. I think so. That's right. Wax Full work. for recommends. Yeah. So this leads us to the most, the second most anticipated part mm. of the show, <laughs> which is we're going to find out right now what we're watching next week. We can't wait. I know you can't either. Sean, what are we watching next week? Uh, a spring of sequels continues. Ah, uh. <laughs> we will be watching. Robocop 2. Oh. <laughs> Frank Miller's. Oh, oh boy. Frank Miller's oh, Robocop kinda. 2. Uh, <laughs> all right. Frank Miller's kinda. Robocop 2. Robocop 2. There Robocop it is. Two. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, we're going to pay some bills. We're going to turn the electric <laughs> off. And the basement is going dark. <laughs>